with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. Super excited today. I've got singer, songwriter, Sonia Lee with me. So welcome, Sonia. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Glad to be here. You know, Ben and Gail have brought me some of the best musicians for the show. But you're the first time that I've had somebody on that I had actually heard their music ahead of time. Like, I knew your music before I even researched it. Oh, my, uh, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, your voice is amazing, but my wife's a big fan. So you're oh, on her playlist. Yeah, so I when, when I got it, I was like, oh, I know this. I know this song. So I, I knew some, uh, some of your music. Yeah, she's been a fan of yours for years. Wow. Tell her I said hello. Yeah, I, I will. I will. I She started listening around around the time you put out uh, Mad Hatter. Oh, cool. So that's oh, probably wow. been four or five years ago, I think. Yeah, that yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's, yeah she, works, she works for Live Nation, so you're on her list. She wants to get us out to a show at some point. Please, come on. You know, no pressure, but, you know, if you could. Anytime, anytime. We got a lot of stuff going on. Until we get out there. <laughs> well, you should come down to Atlanta because I have the the single release party in Atlanta at Eddie's Attic on March fourth. So that'd probably be the closest one for you guys. Yeah, that's yeah, that's actually uh, even driving. It's not terrible. Like it's yeah. not any further to Atlanta than it is, say, to go to Myrtle Beach for us. Yeah, About the same. Well, see, and then you get to explore Atlanta. And I get to see Atlanta. Yeah. So the the new single is uh, Thin Ice. And yeah. So for me, listening to it kind of reminded me of Joan Jett. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like when just immediately when the music starts playing and stuff, I was like, that's kind of like that, that, that reminded me of that. And then with your voice, it's so distinctive and stuff. It's, I love this song. Thank you. I'm very proud of it. I'm pretty excited about this, this release. Yeah, and it comes out like Friday. Yeah, and on the twenty fourth, so it's like in two days. What day is it? It's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, two to, two more days. You've had so many songs that you've released. Is it still a big deal when you get one out, or is it just kind of like ah, just another song? Oh no, it's always important to me. I'm always excited to share new music um, because it's part of my journey, and I think that you know a lot of people that have been listening to me. Um, sometimes don't have any clue what the hell they're about to get because <laughs> really such different kinds of music all the time. Yeah. So it's really, it's really fun to, you really do have like, you cross a lot of genres with that. Yeah. Cause you've got some songs like, like thin ice to, to me sounds kind of, kind of rock kind of, you know, kind of reminds me of Joan Jett, but then you've got some country, you've got what I would call uh, Americana type of type of music. It doesn't really fit one little box. Yeah, I've 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 been that way my whole life. I just when I write, I just have to kind of write what's in my spirit and what comes out, what I'm feeling, what I got to get out. You know, it's kind of not containable, really. If I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like I'm being true to myself and my art. You know. Yeah, well, I think it's I, I think it's you know why tie you and you're seeing that a little more now. You don't see artists strictly stick to a, a genre anymore you know you've got country artists kind of kind of switching over and, and vice versa some even like uh, pop artists switching and doing country and stuff and I think that's I think that's neat it's 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 fun seeing people do things that you're not expecting yeah it's refreshing because like I think as as an art I mean I'm, I'm speaking for myself but like for me like uh, sticking to one genre is almost like coloring with the same color crayon and trying to, you know, get as yeah. creative as you can with the same color. Like, I really enjoy coloring with all the colors in the box, you know. And yeah. it's really it's fun to see everyone get, you know, expressive and, and just chill out a little bit and stop trying to worry so much about um, fitting into one thing or the other. And then I think now we're really getting to 
uh, the essence of art again, yeah. you know, and, and, and some great things are coming out. It's, it's beautiful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good time uh, musically because there's, mm -hmm. there's so many options out there and with, with streaming, it's so easy to get now. Yeah. I, a little I, tougher I, when I was growing up to, you know, <laughs> if you liked a song or something, you, you had to like hold the recorder up to the radio and wait for them to play it. I have those. I have those mixtapes waiting for your song to come on. You know, you know. And then you got to put up with the DJ talking over the beginning oh, and stuff. Beginning, yeah. You can't go to the bathroom. You can't go to the bathroom. No. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss, miss it every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit, Sonia, about, you know, how you got into the music. You know, talk a little bit about growing up and, and what made you want to become a singer. Um, I mean, I I grew up, um, my father's side of the family was um, uh, Pentecostal, so yeah. there was a lot of, a lot of music, music in church, you know, and live yeah. music in church, and my father played, my grandfather played, my, you know, they both played guitar, and my grandfather played mandolin, and banjo, and fiddle, and then my uncle played drums. I always really actually secretly wanted to be a drummer, oh, so yeah. uh, my dad wouldn't buy me a set of drums, so, um, but, um, That's a smart parent right there. <laughs> Honestly, he did me a favor, because I feel so bad for drummers. They're having to lug everything around, you know, I'm like, you yes. guys really want to play the drums to be a drummer. Yeah. That's hard work. Hard work, yeah. Um, but I admire it a lot. I, I'm always, I'm a wannabe. I'm an air drummer, you know. So. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, and being around the, that, that kind of musical environment, my dad wrote songs, my grandfather wrote songs. Um, I was always inspired and, um, I don't think that I ever wanted to do anything else. Um, so ever, ever since I couldn't remember, I wanted to do music. And I, I started learning guitar. Around the age of 10, I kind of yeah. got a hold of like changing chords, you know, enough, fast enough. I could write songs and immediately started writing songs in my bedroom. And that's how I spent my afternoons after school is writing <laughs> songs. Really, I was a nerd. <laughs> I mean, that's not a terrible way to spend it. <laughs> yeah. Well, my dad told me that I used to, I learned to play on his guitar and he told me that, um, if I showed him and I was serious, he'd give me my own guitar one day. Well, I was so serious that every time he tried to play his guitar, I had it in my room playing it. It started annoying him. So I think I wore him down. <laughs> I was going to say, did he buy you a guitar? Because that's parenting in a nutshell, right? You yeah. just, you end up getting worn down and you're like, just fine here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can understand, you know, like kids, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. And a lot of kids say they want to do this and that, and then they throw the toy in the corner. Right. But, you know, he, he made me kind of really show him that I was serious and I was definitely serious, you know, it was all yeah. thought was cool, you know? Yeah. I, I think that's terrific. I had, uh, my my grandfather was a, a Baptist minister, so uh -huh. everybody on that side of the family, you know, they sang, they played piano or the organ, you know, they were very musical with mm -hmm. that, and and there was nothing better than than him and his brothers getting together and just playing, you know, yes. just kind of jamming to together. Room, got some great memories. Stuff. Yeah, I got great yes. memories of that. I'm That's not serious. musical. But I appreciate yes. music, you know, yes. and that's uh, so. Yeah, I I totally get it when you said uh, said your uh, uh, your family was Pentecostal. I was like, <laughs> well, I know what that means. That's a lot of music. I, I will say there's one thing about uh, you know Southern Baptist and Pentecostal. It's it's not a dull moment. That's right. Not boring. No. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it was one of those you know if they didn't have instruments they'd play whatever they had <laughs> you know <laughs> like i remember my grandfather would play spoons yep <laughs> and and it would yeah, sound pretty good sound. yep yep <laughs> <laughs> you, I've, I've been there <laughs> family reunions who was uh when when you like what was your first time on stage were you in it with a band or did you do it uh, solo um, 
I think probably if my first time on stage was probably singing at church at some point. Um, yeah. But I think that around like the age of, well, yeah, I would say around 12 or 13, um, I played bass in my dad's band. He had a little country band and uh, awesome. I started to play bass for them. And um, then they would let me sing some of my songs. So there was this little place in Concord, Georgia called the Opry House. And um, I think that the, that would that would be my first like what I would say my real performances were when they would play they'd let me get up and play and there was a woman an old woman who used to sit in the front row and she had a cowbell and if she liked it she'd just ring it you know and she was that's, always ringing the bell for me so I was <laughs> encouraged that's pretty great I'm sure your dad loved that I yes. mean, I, to, if if I could do something like well I I love like I do this podcast with my with my son and I love that just because we can do it together so i'm yeah. sure your dad yeah, was that to... is a, that's a really big connection between he and i uh his yeah. music you know and um so i'm i'm so thankful to have that that with him yeah that's a that's a big deal and i i've i've been around enough musicians to know that if you're musical you can play about any instrument you just need time now, whether or not you can play it really well, but you right, at least right. play it. Is that yeah. the case with you? Do you play more than guitar and bass? Yeah, I play piano. Um, yeah. Yeah, same thing. Like, I think that if if I'm trying to, I can figure it out. I think once you get the basic theory of music down, um, for me, it was easy for me to transpose. I kind of grew up playing piano a little bit here and there. My sister played the piano. She taught me some stuff and then I took uh, I took keyboarding piano in high school. I went to high school in Indiana yeah. uh, for a couple years at uh, Carmel High, and uh, I took music theory then. And um, I was supposed to be learning like Bach and Beethoven and stuff, but I was writing <laughs> songs as soon as I could transpose chords from the guitar to piano. Yep. I was over. I was already learning all. <laughs> I was writing all kinds <laughs> of music, you know. But he passed me, so. That was cool. <laughs> he didn't make yeah. Any I mean, yeah, I, I love that. And that's, it's, it's neat. I, I, if I had to guess, I was going to guess that you played piano. Yeah. That, can... that seems to, to kind of fit. I'm kind of surprised that you didn't at some point, you know, go ahead and learn drums. Oh, I can play the drums too. Oh yeah. Mm. I can hold my own. I think that uh, if like uh, it's time, like I've always wanted to set, I just haven't, had the chance to really get it. I had a little set for a while and it was, it wasn't the best set, but um, I think if I had more time to, to focus on playing with people, you know, yes. well, I, can, I can sit in and I'm playing on a song and stuff, but I'm too, I'm too shy to like really get behind the drums and play, but I, I know I can, you know, I can hold my own on the drums. I, I love yeah. it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, so the singles thin ice, what tell me about the song? What's it about? You know, what's it mean to you? How did it uh, get written? Um, so you know, I mean, in in music, like you know, there's a lot of ups and downs in this you know yeah. career um, walk, and I think that in the time I was out in LA with uh, one of my best friends, Daphne Willis, who we also have a we do a lot of songwriting together we have a side project called tiger tiger together and we yes. were actually writing for that ep which is actually about to come out on march 8th nice um, but we were writing for that ep and i was just kind of going through some personal stuff and just dealing with discouragement and you know um after the pandemic you know it was a hard knock on a lot of us you know for yeah. tours and things like that and I feel like right now I'm just now catching my breath after that and getting back in the game, really. Um, it was a nice break, you know, but I was just kind of feeling, you know, discouraged. And, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have a lot of our self-doubt and shame and demons that kind of like hold us back from really believing in ourselves and our true, realizing our true potential, you know. And yeah. I think that there was a lot of that. I was feeling kind of a bit of a writer's block that night. And um, we were talking about it and talking about our life. And I just kind of was just strumming on the guitar and I came up with that chorus, you know, feels like I'm walking on. 
thin line. Um, like my honestly, like tears welled up in my eyes, and I felt like a dam was busting. And yeah. I was like, "There it is. That's what I what I need to write about is what I'm feeling." I will say that's, that's probably a, a sign that, that you start. need to write. <laughs> start your heart. Always start right there. You know, if you're lost and um, no matter what it is, and you know. Uh, a lot of times, you know, being honest with your writing when you're feeling discouraged, you know, breaking that kind of like persona of I've got it together and yeah, I'm doing it well. Being able to be honest about your insecurities and where you're at, fighting those inner voices, you know. So this is kind of about just wanting to put that behind you and, you know, say, you know what, damn it, I'm tired of this. I'm going to rise to the occasion recognize it name it and rise to the occasion and stop worrying about I have a lot of different music that's in different styles and I was sitting on a lot of it and just kind of feeling like well what do I what am I going to do like I have all this different styles and where do I fit in you know and that's what it, it's also about saying you know what I don't have to fit in anywhere that's right I'm burning down the cages and I'm going to just start releasing music I'm going to walk my own path and 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 all my truth and and then the rest will fall into place so that was kind of the threshold of that that beginning and power yeah, i love that then, yeah i love that and you brought up a, a good point because i got to see some of the effect you know on musicians you know during the pandemic because you know because my, my wife's with live nation and they lost like 98 percent of their business you know for for that year or year and a half but that had to be difficult on all musicians because you're you're a performer. You're used to interacting with crowds and and getting you know your your art out there, but you couldn't do that as easy, you yes. know, because we're trapped at home. So I, I I imagine that that was what you were feeling was what a lot of people were feeling. Yeah, you know, and it went on and on and on and on, and it's like, well, oh my gosh, what am I going to get back out there? You know, and um, you know, just picking up and, but, you know, I, I also feel like that time was very valuable and it was a needed yeah. time for a lot of people to get in con in connection with their self. You know, I've been going, you know, wide open as an artist and touring for a long time. So it was a nice pause to be able to settle into a, you know, kind of a routine environment and feel like what well, that's like you know not always being on the go and you have to sit with yourself and you I learned a lot about myself during the pandemic and so I feel like you know it, it was very valuable time as well for me yeah that's good did you pick up any you know non-musical skills while you were trapped at home uh um did you learn to cook or anything I, I don't think I did. Um, <laughs> I try to think of anything. Uh, my my partner at the time had a, a a three year old, and I got to you know spend every day with her, and that was, that was pretty great. Pretty much, so that was the coolest part of it yes. all. I really got to spend a lot of time uh, with her daughter and like making crafts and you know, spending time in the sunshine and just watching a kid grow up and trying to keep her entertained during those times. You know, you're my focus. It, I, it was almost a blessing for me. It took my focus off myself and be like, yes. well, how can I make this joyful for this child? And so she got me through it just as much as I think that, you know, <laughs> so kids are awesome. Man. Yeah, I guess that I learned how to be, you know, in a, not a parent role, but a more of a, you know, in that kind of. Role. It does put you, uh, it, it kind of puts things in perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially it's, with younger kids. Cause they're so innocent with stuff. They just enjoy yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it kind of, it kind of makes you think, you know, Hey, if we could do a little more of that, maybe we yes. wouldn't have so many problems. It's true. It's true. Enjoying the simple things in life, you know? Yeah. Uh, that was a nice to get this blow down. I took um I've got uh, I've got four grandkids, soon to be five, but they're all pretty young. And and the thing I took is every time they see anybody in the family, they I mean they just they run up, they hug them, they're just you know, they're excited, they they start talking fast and they're loud. And I'm just like, that's how we should all be when we see people we love. I agree. I agree. You know, 
We should yeah. get more excited about because I think some of that stuff we take for granted and you never know. You know, you, yeah. should, you should enjoy each other. Well, I, I hope that uh, the people who know me can agree, but I am kind of like that. I'm the one that will run across the room and hug you and call you out. From, even if I haven't, you know, I'll interrupt you. I'm so inappropriate. If I'll see somebody else, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to hide their face. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I'll come say hello because I, I think that's I think that's people great. Know you all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you've toured with like all of the bands. All the singers, the bands, you've had just amazing people you've toured with. Can you talk a little bit about some of those tours and some of the groups and people that you've got to, to tour with? Uh, man, I mean, sometimes I forget some of the people and then I'm like, oh, I got to do that too. I'm, I can't I can't say that, um, that I could have been even any more blessed up to this point in my life because yeah. I was able to interact and perform and know the people some of my heroes some of my favorite songwriters and musicians um i grew up um studying uh, melissa etheridge's songwriting and guitar yeah. playing and performances anytime she you know she was you know doing a live show on like vh1 or mtv i i put the put it in the vcr vcrs or whatever those <laughs> <laughs> and i still have those videotapes you know and yeah. um you know, back then there wasn't an, an internet, so I had to rewind the tape and learn it manually on the guitar and and all that. So, um, and um, you know, I later, you know, started performing on her cruises and became friends with her and her wife, and she became a fan of mine. Which that you know Amazing. that's that's a huge thing. And then, um, you know, John Jett, um, I got to she was on uh, one of the cruises, and I got to open for her and meet her a couple times and that was incredible um yeah that's yeah, amazing after, yeah sorry go ahead no no i was just saying that's uh, some of the people you've got to tour with and those two especially because your voice is very unique but they also have very recognizable unique voices yes. i think that's, that'd be a, that'd be a good uh a good combination yeah two strong strong women who paved the ways for women like yes. me you know and um, Beth Hart, I got to open for Beth Hart a couple oh, yeah. times but after being such a fan of her. I was like, sometimes you just can't believe it, you know. Um, I don't know. And, you know, touring with Zach Brown was great. I got to see a lot of this country and play some of the greatest venues from Red Rocks to the Gorge, the Whiskey Go Go. And that was amazing. I don't know. <laughs> some of the coolest things. That I mean, that's I'm, pretty neat. That's, that's some big names. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, pretty blessing yeah yeah do you have a favorite song of yours that you have uh that you have written um every song i to tell you the last song i wrote <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you're right because i've heard that answer before yeah um uh you know i i have a song that's coming out on the new record called never stop that i got to record with nico bolas and sylvia massey who oh, wow. uh, they're legends like Sylvia Massey's work with Tom Petty, Prince, yeah. and Tool, and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Nico's work with Neil Young, Melissa Ether, anybody you can think. And um, but this, I'm really excited about this record. This is that song. I'm really excited about that song. Never stop. That's going to be the third single. Um, um, shoot, I don't know. I really am proud of Thin Ice. Um, That's poem, a good song. poem from the ocean floors. When I, I'm really proud of, of Sweet Annie and Goodbye in Her Eyes that I got to write with Zach Brown and them. Um, I don't Sweet know. Annie was one that that I really enjoyed when I was going back through and kind of listening um, to to some of your music. That was one I thought was good. Yeah, that was uh, oh, uh, Spider in the Roses too. I oh that. yes, yeah, that is another one. Um, I wrote that with Daphne Willis and. Um, we were kind of, uh, we were in LA writing for this side project, Rob the Man, that's about to come out. <laughs> have a lot of projects. You got a lot going on. <laughs> I really do. But I, like I said, I've been sitting on a lot of music and really yes. fearful of releasing it. And, you know, I've shed all that now and I'm ready to just put it out there because there's a place for all of it. And That's right. Oh, and so, um, yeah, so Spider in the Roses, that features Rob the Man. And um, we were outside talking and... Um, 
I knelt down, picked something up off the ground, and she said, watch out, there's a spider in those roses right there. And we both looked at each other, <laughs> and we began writing that song. I'm very proud of that. It's got a, probably the most plays and streams that I have that I have in my catalog. On, on yeah, it's a Spotify. good song. Yeah. Thank you. When you when you hear a phrase or, or something inspires you like that, do you immediately go to start writing, or do you just – tuck that away and then when you get time you know try to write something. sometimes i'll tuck it away but sometimes it'll just start flowing and i have to yeah, yeah. Write it down before i forget it the worst thing is, is when i'm ready to go to bed and the song comes in my my head and i'm so tired i'm like i'll remember it tomorrow or i have a dream and i'm like wake up That's and I'm like, remember this tomorrow and then i forget it and i'm like oh, yeah man. yeah have you have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and you're like that is the best thing I've ever thought of. <laughs> I can't wait to write this down in the morning. And then morning comes and you're like, what was that? <laughs> what was that lyric? <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, are you going to be doing a, a video for the new song? Yeah, we're working on one. I um, I brought a videographer in um, for um, some different live performances yeah. and the recording process and so i'm i'm gonna release something from that footage very soon yeah and um, possibly depending on how things go get a you know a featured like a a more of a you know calculated video because i have a really you know some good ideas for kind of what i would like um so yeah there'll be a video coming very soon when you were when you were growing up and just getting started in in music was that one of the things you looked forward to was was making videos for your for your song because you kind of you're you know you you probably grew up with uh with mtv and and some of yeah. those you know type of video shows that were kind of big back then That's you know not great, as big now yeah. yeah you know it's it's, it's really kind of unfortunate that it's not as you know but i guess there's youtube and everything you know it just comes in a different form it's just different it. it's just different like it used to like do you, i don't know if you remember do you remember friday night videos on mtv or well VH? they they were just yeah. they used to come on like um after like johnny yeah, carson off. you know oh, it'd be late yeah. and then and mm -hmm. then they come out friday night videos and they'd have yeah you know, those were those were yeah, I've I've always had a lot of really grandiose ideas for a video. I've never had the budget that I fully <laughs> wanted to make. Well, my name is Money. When we put that out, yeah, I'm very proud of that video. I came up with that concept. Um, and we shut down a little five points Atlanta and um filmed that. Um Zach Brown actually cameos in that video. It's a, nice. it, it was my first single release when I was on Southern Ground off that record. Yeah, yeah. 28 December, but um I kind of came up in Little Five Points area in Atlanta and I got to um kind of film kind of my my kind of home area and some of the musicians that you know ho the homeless musicians that hang around I grew you know grew up coming and jamming with them on the square and you know <laughs> they got to be in the video and um so yeah that was that was one of the times I got to kind of let my my vision out for a song video yeah, I, I think that's that's awesome. And, so, and some of your videos are really good. Thank you. That's oh, how yeah. I was and listening to some of them. Thank you. Yeah they're, yeah, they're really good. They're really good. Um, do you plan to tour for the rest of the year? Yeah, I've got some great shows coming up. Um, I'm starting off the single release, kind of um, popping around to different spots to like kind of celebrate the single release. I'm starting in Atlanta at Eddie's Attic, which is kind of where I began playing when I was 17. It was like one of the first stages that I got to play on on my own, you know, after I was kind of like home. And it's a little, home, it's a home base for me. I, I even played, you know, there throughout all these years. So we're starting there on March 4th and I'm going to do full band that night that's going to be fun and then um let's say the 22nd i'm doing at the underdog in nashville i'm doing a full band there and then i'm going to go out to la on march 29th uh and do a show at hotel cafe which is another spot that i've you know been playing over the years i'm excited to return there for the first time since the pandemic yeah um, we're gonna do uh, that's gonna be a, a really really big big show i'm excited about that and um 
Yeah. yeah you're jumping like, around a little bit. You, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to continue going, like, uh, looking at all my dates over here. Um, yeah. And the, I think more things are going to be unfolding as the single unfolds, but I'm going to finish the record out in LA, um, doing some more recording with Nico Bolas while I'm out there in, yeah. in April. So that's exciting as well. It is. That's, that's so exciting. Down. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, I know some of your music has been used on uh, for like TV shows and, and movies. How did that come about? Um, well, the I think one of the first shows that my music was ever on was like The Good Wife. Yeah. And um, that was more back when I was like touring and working with Zach Brown band. And then um, when I went to independent, I got to, uh, I performed in a kind of like a, a a contest in Nashville at Third and Lindsley in front of some music supervisors and one of the music yep. supervisors for ABC and The Sims video game. Um, oh, yeah. Her name is Frankie Pine. She, um, uh, I won a, a sync for, um, for the video game The Sims. And then she called me and asked me if I wanted to um, to audition for the show Nashville um, that was on ABC. Yeah, yeah. I never, you know, acted or anything, but I did, you know, a little audition tape, sent it in, and they put me on in the show. So I got the cameo and released When We Are Alone, um, and that was pretty cool. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so that's how that kind of started. But then I recently, you know, in the past four years, started working with BMG and I signed on their film and television department with David Polamini. And uh, yeah. um, so I've been um, getting some syncs with my, my friend Daphne and I have a sync project, Tiger Tiger. We have some stuff and some movies. We have the show. We have a song in The Homecoming and oh, yeah. Academy Awards. Um, there's a movie called Queen Pins. Yep, um, I know that movie. We have a song in there, and um, I don't know. It just keeps kind of coming. So I'm sync is where it's at. So you can you can make a little bit of money with sync. So <laughs> hopefully during the pandemic for sure. Maybe you can make a little bit of money. With sync. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I can make any money with sync. <laughs> yeah. so, I think if I much. had if I had written something that was in a, a show or a movie or something. I would definitely be taking like friends and family, but not tell them that it was in there. And they'd be oh, like, right. oh, yeah. oh, was that me? I, I didn't realize that I was in this. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I think I watched Queen Pins on, on a plane and, and it was like, ah, you know. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool to, to watch something and have some of your music in there or have yourself in there it's even better but that's that's exciting yeah i tried to act in that uh the best i could i'm not a very good actress i've always I wanted to do that too though. it yes. is i have yes. so much respect i only had like like about a three minute like interaction there and i was sweating bullets man trying to men they're very particular so you know i have a lot of respect for it. yeah 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 it's hard work but yeah you should definitely get into that <laughs> I'd like to. I would. I'd have to practice. <laughs> I'm more into like sketch comedy. Like one of my dreams is to be on Saturday Night Live. Like, say, I'm more of a con con comedian. You've like. got the your voice is so unique. I'm surprised that they haven't had you on there already. Well, I'm, that's my goal. I, I have a feeling one day. Because you know, sometimes they'll have musical acts, but then those acts will, you know, show up in a skit or two on yeah, the shows awesome. too. Yeah, yeah, that's what we need. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be sending you a note. I'll be watching Saturday Night Live, and you'll pop up on there. I'll be like, "Aha!" Well, I'm putting <laughs> it into the universe. You know, right. I've, been doing, I've been doing a lot of interviews because uh, I want to shout out to my PR team, uh, Ben and Gail Icon. They're great, um, and um, they you're in good hands with Ben and Gail. <laughs> yeah, they're great, and everywhere I go, everybody's like, oh, "Ben and Gail," you know, and they have a great reputation. They're wonderful, but they've set me up with these interviews, and like every interview, they're like, "Well, who could you meet if you?" I was like, "Laura Michaels," because I want to be on Saturday Night Live. I'm putting it out there, man. Hopefully, people are just going to start. That's it. That's it. They're going to see you on these interviews, and they'll be like, "We should get her on Saturday Night Live." <laughs>
It's on pretty late, though. Are you okay staying up that late? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, honestly, during the pandemic, I was like, okay, with like getting to bed early. I was like, just talking about that. I was like, what's kind of yeah. nice. Well, there wasn't much else going on, so you might as well get some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of sleeping, a lot of eating for oh, those yeah. <laughs> you know, several months. You know, like when it first, when we first got shut down, I was kind of not upset about it. Yeah. You know, those first yeah. couple weeks, I was like, this isn't terrible. But All then right. it just kept, it went on too long. Yeah. You know, you eventually run out of things to yeah. to do when you can't leave the house. It's too complacent, you know. And, yeah, you, you do. Oh, you do. Baby. It's it. Yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't too much eating for yeah. me. I held out for a little while, but at some point I was just like, <laughs> all right, I'm putting on weight. <laughs> yeah, I will say that was probably the most fun with the food. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. It was pretty great. You mentioned um, leaving home when you were pretty young and, and starting out. You know, how did that work? So you're out on your own. You're like 17 years old. You know, how did you, you know, when you left, did you already have something set up or did you have to find something, you know, kind of once you got out there on your own? Um, you know, boy, my life has been, my career, the way it's unfolded has been to, to me an amazing domino effect yeah. that to me showed, was signs to me that this was what I was supposed to do. When I was 14, a family friend of my parents like had me write a song for her boyfriend for his birthday yeah. and um I wrote the song she really loved it I went and played it for him surprised him and then he you know instantly was like a fan and took me to Atlanta um, and then this was from like Concord Georgia about in the sticks he drives <laughs> me to the big city you know <laughs> puts me in the studio and I'm just making my first demo um and this guy, Moses Daly, who worked with Electra Records, who I've yet to see ever again or speak to ever again, except for one other time. And I would love to look him up and, and speak to him again, actually. Um, but um, he came through and saw me in the booth and gave my parents a car and was like, look, I think that she's really got something. Call me. But my parents really didn't want to, like, pursue that. They thought I was too young and things. Right. But I kept his number and. When I left home, um, I called him and he, I never saw him again, but I called him and I said, I don't know if you remember me, but, and he absolutely remembered me and hooked me up with a producer called Chief Hook, who used to be in an 80s band called Talk Talk, who had a studio in Atlanta. Um, do you remember who that is? I do, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, I listened well, to some yeah. of that music. I, that was my, that was oh, my wow. decade, it was the 80s. Yeah. Well, so he hooked me up with him. I ended up doing a record with him and I, he introduced me to my first manager, Steve Stevens, who I made two records when I was with them before I was 18. And then, um, you know, that kind of domino of effect happened. What was the question? I lost myself. <laughs> I can't even remember what you had. How, when you left home, did you already have some stuff set oh, up? Yeah. Is that so why that you left of, or did, yeah. did you leave yeah. and then have to find it? Yeah, yeah. That, I owe it all to Moses Daly, to be fair. Um, and yes. you know, that him just putting in a word and you never know how you can change someone's life by just putting in yes. a word or making a connection. So I've always really, really tried to do that and put that forward for other artists, people, anybody who needs to know each other, you know, make connections. I love that. Yeah, I think that's a that's an important part about being um, an artist, whatever your art is, is that kind of paying it forward you know, giving it back, especially to younger people so that you can, yeah. you know, because you never know who's looking up to you and what sure. kind of an impact you can make, you know, as long as if you're just paying attention, basically. Very true. Very true. Yeah. I take yeah. that very seriously. Yeah, I think that's 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 so great because that's I think that's such an important step, you know, because most most people where they where they fail is is the self-doubt, you know, and just the, the being afraid to try something. So if you look up to somebody and they, they give you a negative reaction, you're probably not going to try whatever it was you were interested in, but if they're positive with you and kind of encourage you, then maybe you give it a try. You never know where that might lead. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had people that, you know, I've, I've encouraged 
end up helping me out on the flip side, you know, and, and so you just, you never know who you're lending a hand to, yeah. and, but I don't do it for that. It's just for the joy of seeing yeah. somebody get to the next place and see. Oh, that's great. Home. Cause I didn't get to where I am on my own. Somebody yeah. said something to somebody or somebody, you know, put in a word that's for right. me. Well, yeah, that's, that's terrific. Well, uh, Sonia, thank you so much. It's, I'm a big fan of yours now, which okay. admittedly, <laughs> once I, once I brought it up, my wife was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I've been listening to her for years. That's oh crazy, God. man. That's so cool. Tell her what's up. And I hope y'all come to a show sometime and let me know. Anytime. We're going to make one. I'll take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely will. That, uh, uh, yeah, you're going to be in LA in March. I would not be surprised if, uh, she tries to get out there. She's out in LA about once a month. So oh, yeah. tell her you're going to be out there. Yeah. I'm going to be like, hmm. Tell her, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. I think I'd, uh, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So a couple of things before, uh, before we wrap up, um, anything else that you're working on that we can keep an eye out for? I think we touched on most of it, but anything else you have that we can keep an eye out for? Yeah, um, keep an eye out for the single coming out on Friday. Um, yeah, yeah. And then then nice. March 8th, Tiger Tiger EP release is coming out. That's exciting. On me, Daphne Willis. Um, March 17th, my side project, Rob the Man, which I've been working on for years, is the first single is coming out on 1RPM called Bury Me Alive, and the video is coming out as well. Um, I'm super duper excited about that. Um, I have another, like a lo-fi hip-hop project called The Indica Girls, and we have a single coming out on 420. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of stuff in just a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. And my and Daphne actually has a song coming out on March 10th called Feels Like Ages that we wrote together, which I just want to throw her some love on that because we're really excited about that song too. So yeah, there's so much going on, man. And I'm I'm just so thankful, so thankful for the gift of music and people like you for giving me a platform to get the news out there. Thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, of course. It's uh, my pleasure. Um, so last thing before we wrap up. Where can we find you on social media and where can we find your music? Well, I'm on all the streaming platforms. Um, yeah. If you go to my website, sonialee.com, S-O-N-I-A-L-E-I-G-H.com, all of my um, social media um, handles are there. And please sign up for my newsletter so you can kind of keep in contact and, and up to date on what's going on. Um, but, you know, you can pretty much find me under Sonia Lee anywhere. Um, yeah. The, yeah yeah i found you really uh really easy and you've got a youtube channel too right yes yeah please subscribe to my youtube channel i need some love there I'm trying to grow my youtube numbers so yeah i know and that feeling RPM too. thank you one rpm for putting out this single shelby uh kennedy over there he's been a great help um so i just wanted to show some love there and lynette garbanola has been a good help to me so just the people behind the scenes that are helping me oh and um caleb poer did the artwork for the single, um, yeah. Mitch Dane did the, all the producing. My band performed on it. Jacob Thomas Jr., Coley, Jackson Price, um, and Teddy Morgan did all the mixing, and uh, Piper Payne and Infrasonic Sound did all the mastering. So I just want to throw some love back to all the people who showed me love to make this single happen. So I, lo I love that you do that because there's so many. There's always so many people working on that stuff. Really? That's that's really cool that you're you're spreading the love around a little bit yeah totally totally <laughs> everybody's so great i'm so 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 happy to have such wonderful people in my life making music with me yeah that's awesome well oh, uh, sonia okay. thank you so much you got to come back you got to come back maybe, to. maybe later in the year once you've got all this stuff out then you can come back and we can talk about how it went let's catch up i love it yeah, so yeah that's awesome okay it's a right. it's, it's it's a done Today. deal we're going to do it <laughs> all right thank buddy. you again. you're so welcome all right. all right so that was the talented sonia lee lee l-e-i-g-h um if you have not heard her music before really encourage you to go check it out her her voice is unbelievable once you hear it one time you'll always remember it you'll you'll recognize it uh, no matter what uh, 
genre she's playing. She's she's got a very distinctive uh, voice. Really, really talented. Um, amazing, amazing. So happy to have her on the show. She's very humble. With uh, you know, she's uh, she's toured with some amazing groups and got to got to play with some really big uh, big names. And I think we hit on some of them. Um, I don't remember if we mentioned Eric Church and Willie Nelson, but she's done some uh, done some work uh, with them as well. Really, really talented. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it gave you a little bit of insight to uh, to her and her music. Uh, give her some love and some support. She definitely is worth your time. If you're finding us for the first time, you know, we could use your support as well. A couple of easy ways to do that. If you're watching on YouTube, MeisterCon pod, just hit subscribe. That would really help us out. Just hit the button, subscribe. We love to have you visit, watch an episode. Love that. Definitely appreciate that. But it helps us the most if you hit subscribe so appreciate that it's uh youtube MeisterCon pod if you're listening wherever you listen to your podcast from whatever platform you're using just subscribe there that'll help us as well we uh we released episode 531 today and you can find all of those audio and video on our website meistercon.com and it'll also let you know if we have anything going on here in the studio if we're going on location covering a convention you know brett and i worked a convention here uh here in charleston a gaming convention called dual con uh just had the best time we got to uh uh got to do a panel we got to uh help out with uh, the cosplay contest got to do a little auction you know never got to be an auctioneer so now i can say we've done that uh it's a lot of fun so so if we have anything like that going on that'll be on the website MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.